Right, well, I'll start doing some uh, in introductions. So, noodling on the piano, we have uh, <laughs> en Enrico Batelli from Conductive Music. And uh, it's really great, Enrico, to have you here again to do one of these. Um, Thank you very much for having me. And we also have with us today, we have Megan Rowe, who uh, you might have seen from Northern Online Broadcasts. Um, so Megan is, uh, she's an artist, musician in her own right. She plays with the very formidable and wonderful Jay Frisco. She's also one of the music leaders on our Jazz Camp for Girls project. And uh, she did a really interesting project for us. She saved one of our jazz camps, which we couldn't do because of the uh, pandemic and did a, a virtual version so how on earth did you do a jazz camp when you couldn't play any instruments? It was difficult. It was definitely a challenge. Um, but we just we just had to improvise, which is what Jazz North is all about. Uh, <laughs> but basically, we just changed. We still were able to, re to meet our objectives. Um, we changed our lesson plan so that we would have 30 minutes in, in a Zoom chat with all the students and it would be almost, um, it would be a discussion and then we would, in a lecture-like fashion, we would tell them some information and we based it on graphic scores um, because we could use the screen sharing feature on Zoom to show all these graphic scores. So then we set our students a task of creating their own graphic scores. Uh, and then when they'd done those, they sent them over via email and we analyzed them together in the Zoom. Uh, so we used a lot of the features that Zoom has to make it interactive uh, and to show a lot of things visually. Um, and it worked well. We were still able to, to reach our targets and get our students engaged and thinking about music in a different way. So, um, yeah, we're really happy with it. I can't hear you very well, Nigel, is your... Sorry, I've had to, I turned my mic down. Um, yeah, so it's great having Megan in, involved. I wanted just to tell you about that, about, about what she's been doing, because it kind of ties in with what uh, Enrico is going to be talking about. But to finish Enrico's um, introduction, so Enrico is Conductive Music, fantastic organization. Uh, they're one of Jazz North's partners. And Enrico first came up to the North, I think it was three or four years ago, and totally captivated us all at our education conference by doing a very dynamic presentation. And he, I think we ended up playing music on the body of the, uh, the head of a, a music hub. Yes. A, a makey makey device. <laughs> And we could touch different parts Absolutely. of her upper body and it played different notes. And it was, we were just plus using makey makey and the little raspberries and, and you played some music on a, on a fruit salad. But the really important thing is Indeed. you're right at the, the front edge of taking music into classrooms and beyond classrooms, reaching out to, uh, to communities where they, they don't get any music education, but using yeah. really exciting, freely available technology. And I, I know you really want to talk, but I'll just, just say this before I let, let you go, which is <laughs> one of the other key things that struck me about the work that you do is that in the past, if we wanted to do something with musical apps and technology, it used to cost us lots of money. You had to buy things. True. But it's, it, I'm really uh, impressed with how all the things that you've been introducing, introducing to us, they're free, freely available. They don't cost any money. And so there's no barrier for a school or if it was a parent at home, there's, there's, no, there's no financial barriers for anybody wanting to start making music online. And today we're going to be talking about four apps in particular, which are all browser-based music making apps, which are yep. loads of fun for children of all different ages. Um, the way we'll, we'll, we'll go today, Enrico will take us through the different ones. You're free to ask, uh, ask questions at any time. Megan will be keeping an eye on the, uh, the chat. So please use the chat if you want to ask anything. And then Megan will feed questions and things in. And we also have the consultation um, sessions this afternoon. Uh, if you'd like to book a 20 minute slot 
later on this afternoon just to talk about any of these topics, then please do so. And uh, if you send an email to me, nigel at jazznorth.org, or just put something in the chat and uh, I'll, I'll get back to you. And I'll be thinking about the chat consultations during this while Enrico carries on. So without further ado, please put your, oh, you've got some hands. You can show your, it's an app. You can, <laughs> please show your virtual hands if you can find where they are and um, say hello to Enrico. And uh, over to you, Enrico. Hello. Oh, wonderful. Well, thank you very much for joining. Thank you for your time, of course. Um, and uh, thanks for joining us uh, this afternoon. So as Nigel really, really uh, um, well introduced us, uh, we are uh, dedicated to the STEAM approach, which is not a mispronunciation of STEM, but it's where the arts take over the science, tech, engineering, and maths, put them all together into different experiences. So in a normal day, we would be in a different city pretty much every week, going into primary, secondary schools, kindergartens, during the academic year, delivering these sessions. Uh, the idea is to use these resources with the children from challenging backgrounds. Uh, the buzzwords in the UK is uh, the cold spots. So those that do not have access to art education or music technology or any music at all. Uh, perhaps some schools, actually many of them have completely obliterated the music department or perhaps merged it into the arts or the drama because who cares? The humanities is all one, isn't it? So if we can get rid of them with two hours a week, that's fine. Um, the other side of the coin is uh, our, us working into the international schools, those that uh, instead of costing zero, cost maybe 20, 30, 40, 50,000 pounds a year. And yet in those schools, music is taught two, three, four times a week, plus the music competitions and plus the art competitions. So guess what? Our crusade is to try and get those that can afford that type of money uh, to access, experience, and experiment with all these devices. So today we decided to curate a little list of um, um, apps that we use. So normally when we go into school, we would have uh, some uh, devices, obviously, but uh, for obvious reasons, these will not be used for, I, I'm afraid, quite a long time because they all have to do with touch. And of course, touching and passing it on, it's not a good thing to do these days. So we shifted all of our delivery online and uh, we've been using things that we used in the past, but uh, we've made a precise selection which only allowed apps which either are completely free or have a free version, um, can be available on a browser so nothing to install, nothing to CPU hungry, which means you don't need to have a, a chunky computer to run it. You can just run it on pretty much anything. Um, and especially those who have, uh, which have an app version, so a tablet or a phone. Because uh, I, I guess there's lots of people also joining not from outside of England, but uh, one of the major trends, which is despicable, horrible, and really wrong, is that the schools are uh, really going into tablets at the moment. So I do understand that uh, it's less of a headache because they work and the battery lasts longer, but they really do not give any um, computing skills to the kids. The tablets work. That's it. You don't learn how to make them work. You turn it on and they do. Uh, we are convinced of the opposite. And that's why on all of our workshops, uh, we have these um, starting from zero uh, idea. So in brief, the journey that I want to introduce you today is uh, from uh, apps that are good for year one and uh, all the way to, let's say, whatever your age is, uh, everything is flexible. But uh, the principle in which we decide which your group uh, works and so forth is, if you're young, key stage one, that means, for those of you outside of England, key stage one pretty much means up to five, six years old. And uh, for that, we give you a machine that works and you interact with it and you explore the physical world or the digital world with it. After that, as you get a little bit older, what we call year three and four here, the lower key stage two, then you've got a machine that you need to put together. So it does something by itself, but you need to attach stuff to it. And then as you get older, year five and six, the machine by itself does nothing. So you need to learn its language and uh, that's block-based coding. We're gonna take a look at it as well. And finally, when it comes to um, secondary school, the machine does not exist anymore. You do not have a machine. You need to put together the components into a custom made machine, which you then code and then create an instrument with. And this journey that goes obviously through all the hard sciences, it's always um, 
guided by the music aim. So at the end of the day, we're going to have a musical instrument, we're going to have a composition, we're going to have an ensemble performance, or we're going to have uh, at least a rehearsal. And the beautiful thing is that uh, whatever your skill level is, you always have an end-to-end experience, which is what usually is missing for all of the kids that we are uh, dealing with uh, those that could have uh, so, so basically they are de- defined as challenging backgrounds so they could have behavior problems linguistic problems learning differences uh, they could be in a special school in a pupil referral unit um, or in many different contexts uh, we've teaching we've been teaching in uh, youth centers and so forth you know uh, you name it if if there is a challenge at least these will give you a these apps, these uh, workshops will give you a path from beginning to end and you'll be able to achieve something, creating a milestone to boost resilience and uh, um, hopefully self-esteem. So without further ado, I think uh, let's make some noise. <laughs> let's start with the first things. Um, I would like to start with um, uh, Dot Piano. So this is a website, it's dotpiano.com. I'm gonna share and feel free to interject at any time. That's absolutely fine. So sure, I'll, I'll just interject, Enrico. Go for it. And just to say, um, I'd be really curious to know when we talk about these different apps, what the experience is, if, if there are any of the people who are with us today have actually used it. So if you've actually come across Dot Piano, can you, can you raise your hand? Where is, hey, Megan, where's that hand thing? How do I raise my hand? Raise your hand. I don't think you can because- Oh, there we go. The, uh, Jack's oh, you can. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. So Jack's done it. Thank you. Fabulous. I should know how to do that, or maybe I can't. Okay. So. <laughs> okay, okay. Right. So dot piano. It's called dot piano because it uses guess what dots. So what are you doing? Are you just are you. Are there assigned keys or which keys work on the piano? Yes. So I'm using. Um, if you're on a laptop, guys. So it's from uh, basically A to L, or actually. The semicolon works as well. And uh, ooh, yes, sorry, all the way to the apostrophe. At least this is on a English standard keyboard on a QRT system. Uh, from A to comma, they work. For those of you in France, um, I believe your Q and A is inverted. So you're going to have to change your keyboard layout. Uh, um, so in those in Germany as well, I think you've got the Z in a different place. So unfortunately, you need to set the keyboard to uh, a US standard or UK standard, which is ASCII, um, because all of these apps, so I'm just going to go a little bit geeky technical stuff, but in case you are wondering why, they're based on JavaScript and on the ASCII uh, stuff, or in a more advanced way in the, on Unicode. These are all technical things to say that each key you press has got a certain code behind it. And if the key is in a different place, these apps don't work. So to make it work, we need to unfortunately adhere to the imperialism of the US and the UK, uh, which uh, coming from Italy is a bit annoying, but uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, so you basically press uh, A, S, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, semicolon and apostrophe, and you've got your C major scale. Uh, of course, you've got your black keys uh, uh, on the row above, uh, laid out exactly like the piano. So W, E, T, Y, U. Okay, the numbers from one to five create different visualizations. For example, do you see it? It's appearing on the screen slowly, little by little. So this one is great to teach the kids about uh, attack, uh, not in in weapon way, but in uh, sound (laughs) attack, right? And then uh, you can change the octave by pressing Z and X. So I can go higher by pressing X. Is the volume okay, guys? Uh, is everything coming through fine? That's great. Yeah, okay, may, fabulous. May, Thank could you. Be, could be a little bit louder on the okay, piano Okay, I can sound. come up a bit, no problem. How's now? Okay. Yeah, okay, perfect. That's great. And um, another visualization, just so... Okay, Um, I'm gonna jump to the MIDI keyboard as well. And it's the same thing, I just plugged it in and if you're on Chrome, it works right out of the box. So I'm just, I've got a MIDI keyboard here on my desk and that's it. Oh, cool. The advantage here is that you can show the dynamics. So a very powerful chord or something, or something voiced. 
Um, when you plug in your MIDI keyboard, is yeah. there anything you have to do to, to change the preferences so it picks up your MIDI signal? Not really. Not on this one. It should be straightforward. So what I suggest is using a Chrome because it's got the Google API for the, it's called the Web Audio API. And oh, sorry, I've got a colleague asking for help. Can you give me three seconds? What's yeah. So what, yeah. What, what's really interesting for this is thinking about how you would would use it and I guess it, it, it's, it's quite limited in what it does I was just saying Enrico this is probably quite this is quite limited in what it does so this really is for you know for toddlers and very small children uh, how would you points use of it? view points of view because uh, I mean this is a complete instrument that has uh, also this type of visualizations which are really beautiful oh wow and you can talk about uh, I mean unfortunately they don't use the the chroma color language which is a bit of a shame, uh, but uh, unfortunately get used to it because uh, the engineers don't really speak music. And when I use uh, the, the word uh, chrome, um, what's it called, a chrome, chrome color notation, it's pretty much the boom wax stuff. So in theory, oh, okay. C should be my red, but here is blue, which is really annoying. <laughs> and then if I go and fetch a red, there we go, it's my E natural or E flat. So it's a little bit of a problem. And so you got these five uh, visualizations. Again, we use these uh, in conjunction to some uh, uh, physical computing tools so that they, you have something to touch and interact with. The, the easiest way, of course, is by using the computer keyboard. And the a bit more complicated way is to use the MIDI keyboard, but it's the same result. And finally, uh, if you have an iPad, you can try it again on Chrome if you've got the keyboard attachment. So this one needs that. If you have a USB extension, some of them are able to power up some MIDI keyboard. But again, the iPad is a little bit, uh, um, how do you say, touchy-feely with the amounts of electricity that you can provide. So, you know, it's, it's a kind of a testing, testing ground. So this is it. This is um, what we use for the year one and two. And the idea is always to talk about uh, high and low dynamics, uh, creating a loop, and you can also record because uh, just by Christy. And then now it's looping. So I can uh, play. Uh, that's it. Okay. Does it make sense? Is there any questions yeah. about this? Um, of course, there's more to explore, but I'm just thinking, let's uh, plow through <laughs> because yeah. there's lots of stuff. Uh, shall I carry on to the next one? Have you got any questions what? in particular? Yeah, so see if any, any questions before we move on. How fast can you type on chat? Yes, we're using the, the chat here to uh, mm -hmm. chat is keep okay. in touch yes. with you. Okay, well, you know, if you've got any questions, I, I guess we can also keep them up uh, afterwards. It's not a problem. So the next one, the, oh. There we go. What would be the outcome for this in a lesson? The outcome, well, you're the teacher, right? So you need to make your own outcomes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so basically in here, you can talk about pitch, relative pitch, rhythm, dynamics, and uh, just uh, make them explore the computer keyboard, talk about the notes, talk about uh, whichever instrument you've plugged in, because maybe you plugged in a, a launch pad as opposed to a keyboard, as opposed to, uh, I mean, the one that we use is called a touch me, um, checking if I've got it around me, not, not really, but uh, if you get, just go to playtronica.com, you can check the, the touch me. Um, I'm not discussing the physical devices because uh, anyways, you will not be able to use them for the next 12 months because of coronavirus. So I'm just gonna stick to the, uh, the web stuff. Um, but um, in a normal day, uh, we would uh, use this, which imagine it as a kind of a cartoon bone like a, a drone bone, you hold it and uh, it measures how much electricity goes through your hands. And the more you move, the more you squeeze, sorry, uh, the, the higher the pitch goes or the lower the pitch goes. 
So that's a, that's a possibility, for example. We ask the children to make some drawings with graphite, and that creates a, um, a circuit, because of course graphite conducts electricity. So you can talk about resistance, and you can explain a difficult concept as resistance to those as young as year one and two. And teachers always say, no, that's not possible. But uh, 10,000 students that I taught last year say the different. So every time you've got a science concept, uh, concept, you can always boil it down to very, 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 very basic stuff. And when you have a physical explanation of this, so here's my finger, here's the piece of paper, I'm close to the beginning of it, or I'm near the end, the pitch changes, that's your resistance. So whenever you have a, a practical example, it's really easy to appreciate it and understand it. And of course, uh, you can play, uh, you can see how your name um, looks like on the keyboard and so forth. Should we say as well that you'd be using another interface? There's also things like the, the Makey Makey device. Yes, yes, yes. So all of these are, uh, they, they're based on one very old technology from the 70s called capacitive sensing. And to make it very simple is uh, when you touch, you transmit some electricity. And uh, when there is some electricity, a circuit can uh, either open or close, so you can send a signal to the computer. In short, when you touch this stuff, you can make a note. And this stuff could be a plate of metal or connected to a crocodile clip brought into uh, some uh, glasses of water or perhaps gummy worms or fruit or sandwiches, or basically anything with metals or liquids inside. And all of a sudden you've got a, a complete keyboard at your disposal which does not necessarily need to be a musical object either because it's sending some uh, keystrokes to the computer, which means that um, when the computer receives some letters, you can just create any patch that you would like um, in Scratch, for example, which we're going to uh, tackle in a few minutes. Um, let's say similar to um, Dot Piano, we've got the Patatap, which is, this is quite new actually. The browser version is free. The App Store, um, I think it's about a couple of pounds, um, but uh, it's quite nice. It's, uh, this one has got uh, video and uh, uh, audio loops. So when I press any keys here, let's, uh, the first one I've got is uh, F. So you can just press it once or just hold it for a loop. And then you can invent a story. So for example, hello everyone is here. I just typed hello everyone on my keyboard. Mm -hmm. um, you can do polyphony by pressing two keyboards at the same time. So this is hello by the way. So H-E-L-L-O, H-E-L-L-O. But if I press H and E together, So again, here you can uh, start constructing your videos, your um, interactions, your stories, why not? Um, and of course, this also opens the door to scratch because this is something fancy that somebody else has made, but uh, why not making it your own version? And on scratch, you can actually do it. It's not too difficult, it's possible. It's not gonna be this fancy, of course. Keep in mind, to become an engineer, you need your five, six, seven years of university and 10 years to understand stuff. Uh, if you play the violin, you would not go on stage before you studied 10 or 15 years. That's the same for electronics. If you picked up a delay pedal and you go on stage tomorrow, that's not a good idea because people have been doing it for 20 years. So even though it's a new technology, it takes a little bit of time to actually master it. This one I think is quite fun, basic, and it's quite cool to explore the interaction with the computer. It doesn't have any MIDI, uh, but as you can see on the screen, it says uh, A to Z or spacebar. What does the spacebar do? Oh. The, sorry, the space bar has got different presets and I've just figured it out because <laughs> I didn't even see that. <laughs> so space bar changes the background and then uh, you got different things. Um, at the bottom of this, if you want, we uh, just before the, the, actually, I don't know if you saw it on Facebook, just before uh, the start of this uh, webinar, we found a type of tone um, and opened it. So this was what I put, let me just delete this. Can I do it quicker? No, okay, sorry. There we go, you can type something. There we go, let's see. 
You can go to the message. So I'm just going to refresh the website. There we go. So you can type a message. And then just uh, turn on the audio and wait. And it will play through it. That's it. And again, you can change the sounds. So this is a very, very good way to start uh, exploring. Of, obviously, you can make your own uh, uh, stories. You can ask the kids to come up with uh, any, any sort of uh, writing that they like, and then you can put it into music uh, very easily. You can also share it here, which is very beautiful, and also embedding. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but this iframe block, it's uh, just a piece of HTML, really, that uh, all you have to do is copy, paste it onto a website, and then it shows up straight onto the web page. So it's very easy if you want to put it on a school blog or something uh, to just uh, put the creations in there and they will be playing there. Same for Facebook and Twitter. I do not think this can be uh, previewed live on Facebook. It will probably put a placeholder icon or image and then you click on it and it opens the app uh, on a browser. I haven't tested it because we just found it, but from previous experience, it's just going to be a placeholding thing. So these are Puttertap and uh, um, Typotone. And these, again, they are for very, very young children, Key Stage 1, because the idea is to give them something that is ready, it works, and it doesn't require too much knowledge or any type of technology, especially these days if you are reaching out to them uh, over Zoom. And uh, before we move away from Key Stage 1, another suite, which is really, really good, is the Chrome Music Lab which has got all of these squares are different ones. If you like to know more, we have produced videos on our YouTube channel, Conductive Music, on pretty much uh, all of them. Uh, the, my favorite, I have to say, is Kandinsky, which is a beautiful connection between visuals and audio, where you can create uh, just squiggly line, if you like, and then play it back. Or you can oh, create like some that. shapes. Yeah. yeah, this is very beautiful. This works on a smart board, obviously. You can change the sounds. Or you can uh, be a little bit more precise and prescriptive and create a rhythm. So the, there we go, the triangle are per percussion sounds. So this should come up as a boots and cuts. Let's see if I use this one. So apart from that, and then maybe I can add some synth voices. Oh yeah, I like this. I'd like to play with this. I've not yeah. played stage one. <laughs> it's cool, isn't it? Once again, if you're looking for the precise notes and the precise rhythms, you are in the wrong place. Um, this is a app to get the cross art experience. If you want the right notes, we've invented it 600 years ago. It's called the piano. Stick to that one. You'll be safe. Um, for all <laughs> of the technology. Yeah. Well, I mean, we usually get this uh, criticism, especially from music teachers. And uh, I think you're just in the wrong place. You know, if Jimi Hendrix in Woodstock went on stage with a classical guitar, nobody would have cared about the national anthem. Yeah. But uh, by playing with an um, electric guitar, that changes history. If you keep doing the same with technology, trying to emulate what you do with a real instrument, with an acoustic instrument, again, I think you're out of place. Uh, and that's why um, they're not, they, they, you'll never receive the same. It doesn't, doesn't matter how far you go. Uh, you're never going to make a violin. That's it, impossible. Yeah. Uh, sorry about the noise. We've got some uh, funky people outside that uh, would like to, to, to fine tune their uh, uh, car horns. Um, other fabulous apps in here. You can play around with all of them. They are really self-explanatory. Can, can I ask a quick question? Yes, yes, sorry. So, sorry, go for it. 
so Chrome, is it connected with Google or why is it called Chrome or is that just a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, an, it's the API of, uh, of Google. So basically the story goes that um, the, the main reason why Chrome is the most advanced one is because Google released the web API, web audio API, which is pretty much the first time in which we could easily make music software on a browser. Uh, others have started copying it, but uh, it's not as reliable. So that's why it's, it's a patent of Google, of course, but the API is free. So if you're a developer, uh, you can create apps using that one is, is, is available for everyone. Um, so just a quick, mm -hmm. quick question. I know we touched on this before in our last webinar, but are there some situations when you go into uh, a school where some of these, these apps are blocked by the school system? Yes. And, yes. And, and your solution, a quick solution <laughs> to get around that. Okay. The quick solution is, um, well, when we do it, so basically just tether from your phone, bypass the internet connection of the school and just do it. Um, if you are uh, from the school, in that case, you can probably ask the website to be uh, unblocked and so forth. But uh, pretty much, you know, unfortunately, a great majority of the outsourced computing systems. So when you don't have the IT manager in the school, but outside, um, unfortunately, you know, they block everything because of security reasons. So every single website we do, I mean, they even block the short links where we use all our lesson plans and all our surveys. So that's, that's a big problem. Um, if you are an external company going in, I just suggest bring your own machines, hook them up to the smart board and job done. Um, for the school itself, if you cannot get around the, the blocks, the only thing to do is to install a virtual private network, a VPN, and that, uh, that, gets, around, that gets you around the blocks. Um, I, you know, when we get to schools, um, rarely the staff is set up as we request it to be set up. So we just try an array of solutions until we find a way through. Okay, thanks for talking about that. <laughs> no problem, no problem. <laughs> Okie dokie. Let, let me show you a couple of uh, other uh, cool things here. Um, so when we do the more advanced workshops in secondary school, we still use this one to speak about the uh, sine wave and, uh, well, actually wave generates oscillators, if you're familiar with the word. This is a square wave. I hope it's not too loud. Uh, then it's easy to understand the difference between that, which is quite coarse. You can hear the clicks. And you see the shape of the square wave there. Uh, different from the sawtooth wave, the uh, triangle wave, and the smoothness of the sine wave. For music theory, you can also use the harmonics here. So this is basically the, uh, sorry, I'm jumping a little bit more into physics and acoustics, but uh, since we're on this website, it's quite useful. I'm sure you've all spun a pipe in the air at some point. And depending on the speed, you get this. If you're a little bit less, uh, uh, a, bit, a, a bit more of a brass player, I'm sure you've played your natural horns in the past, and this is how we used to build them before the invention of pistons. And at the same time, you can talk about the modes of vibration of a monochord using this thing. So these are the partials, basically, mm -hmm. your octave, your octave above, and your fifth. Um, if instead you have, uh, you're facing a class of toddlers, of course, modes of vibrations, nodes means absolutely nothing. So just put it on the screen, let them <laughs> just strum <laughs> through and have some fun. The, the, the beautiful thing about these is that you can have a, a, a usage of, uh, you know, a level one usage and a level 100 usage. And of course, you've got this uh, song maker. This one, again, is, is based on the, on the chroma notes system. This one is properly done. So... You got your fabulous, uh, pardon, there we go. And then you can play back. You can, uh, this one you can actually play with a MIDI keyboard. Let me just uh, delete this. If you connect the MIDI keyboard, uh, by the way, sorry, I didn't say this is a step sequencer. So uh, you got bottom C. Uh, so C, I, it sounds like C3 maybe or C2. This is a, uh, yeah, I think this is middle C. And then everything in between, right? Uh, if you connect to the MIDI, I can now play. Okay. 
Oh, it's not letting me input it. Why? What's that? Just a second. I'm um, too low. Sorry, sorry. I was wrong up there. So you see, it's easy to just type in. I was just playing around with the keyboard. And uh, if you fancy a challenge, Tom, you can also use your microphone to compose. This is going to be terrible. Sorry in advance. I'm looking forward to this. Come on. <laughs> Doesn't like my D. There you go, I cheat. Uh, so you see, you can sing through it. So you can actually uh, try and see if the kids can sing it. That's um, great. Once, That's yeah. really good. Yeah. That, I could once, see that being useful for vocal students. If you, yes. you know, some, some students, you might have problems with pitch. If you can visualize that and they, you know, their, their audio is going into that and it's a yes or no, they know exactly um yes pitch they're, they're singing which absolutely really absolutely you could change the if, you, if you're doing i mean i would say that this is a bit more of advanced use so you can change your key here you can change the mode just major pentatonic and chromatic uh because of course americans don't like uh, minor things because they are too sad for them <laughs> oh, sorry <laughs> <laughs> uh, length of the bars uh, beats of the bar and so forth. Um, you can find lots of uh, interesting things here. Uh, rhythm subdivisions, the range. Uh, so for example, you can get three octaves, uh, different subdivisions. So there you go. Now you've got triplets. So let's do a bit more jazzy feel. Oh, that's not jazz. <laughs> <laughs> well, just changing it to a pentatonic would be okay. fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so of course you've got a few sounds here that you can change and something that sorry i didn't uh, uh even touched on is the uh, drums so you got here okay so you've got uh, just a couple of choices really again this is a basic software if you're looking for professional use this is not it. This is absolutely not it. I would say that this is a good introduction to music making to anybody who does not have a musical experience, does not have a, a huge amount of time, and perhaps just wants to play around a little bit. Uh, this being said, you can do pretty advanced stuff because you've got polyphonic um, use here. So if you use the, let's say you slow down the sound and you use the strings, I forgot what I chose for settings, sorry. It's just a major key. Okay, fine. Let's go back to two. All right, so your C major chord should be like that. You've got your F, you've got your G, G7, and then you've got your, oh, sorry. Yes, no, that's it. So you can potentially teach harmony with this. You've got your cadence there. Uh, but by the way, in case it was a bit weird to understand, uh, this is just a C major scale um, without, the, the black keys are not represented at the moment. If you want the sharps and the flats, you're gonna have to go into settings and grab your chromatic scale, which will split the octave in 12, obvious. Um, but here, this is basically C, E, G, C, C, F, A, D, G, B, D, F, G, B, so C7, and then uh, C, E, G, C. Very, very simple. I mean, but I think it's a cool visualization. Um, and also what we do sometimes in, in the workshop, because this is the same as the boom wax. We can use these instead of as a playback, we can just use this as a score. So you give one color per kid or per group, and then you just uh, call all the reds play here, all the oranges play here, all the blue play here. Uh, so you can use it as a, as a scoring system. And I don't know, maybe Megan, you mentioned some uh, graphic scores at the beginning. This is possibly one of the most basic uh, examples that you can, uh, you can have. So one second. So you, you, yes. mentioned, you mentioned boom wax before, maybe I missed it. So is, is that an app or that's something you, you can plug in? That's a specific uh, no, thing? No, 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 sorry. Uh, boom wax are... Um, these things. 
Okay, thank you. So these are the, sorry, sorry. Um, oh, okay. These are the plastic pipes that pretty much live in every single primary school. And then um, you can use them. So you just whack them on people, yep. which is the most fun way to do it. And, uh, and they make a little sound. Uh, so each, they're color coded, obviously. So the colors are not random. And that's why I was complaining about dot piano, because in that case, the colors are not associated with this, which is a little bit annoying. Um, but yeah. This is this is quite cool. That's why you can use it as a as a score for for for, for the boombox. So are these recognised colours for sounds? I mean, who decided oh, those, yeah, yes, those yes, colours? Yes. Uh, this is a system from the seventies, and it's just become standard basically. So it's one of those that just stick stick around. You can decide to use it or not. Uh, if you use the Suzuki method, you would have different things. Uh, that, that's when you basically you color the different strings on the violin, for example. Uh, but uh, I would say that this is the most common one that I've seen so far. Uh, as always, it's a system. So, you know, it's not universal. It's not that uh, C frequency 262 hertz is red for any particular reason. Uh, somebody came up with it and that's it. Okay, thank you. No that's the problem. chroma color. I think you... uh, yes, 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 yes. Um, okay, so uh, obviously on the, on the music lab here, feel free to play around as much as you like. We published last week on our YouTube um, the spectrogram. And uh, this is, it seems really, really basic. It's basically a picture of your voice. So if I turn on the microphone now, hello, hello, hi, this is my voice. Um, one thing to keep in mind is if you don't have a powerful computer, it's going to die on you because although it looks simple, this is a real-time analysis of the sound. So it takes a lot of CPU power. Um, you can do a lot of things. You can paint stuff. You can uh, color things. And there are um, image th synthesizers that transform any picture into a, a system of sine waves and then can play it back into a spectrograph and uh, show you the picture, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, just check it on YouTube, uh, uh, Image Synth, or if you want to check our tutorial at the end of our video, we also explain about that. Wow, that's, that's, it. that's pretty cool as well. Yes, 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 yes. Again, you know, I like these because you've got the very simple interaction or you've got a long-term um, application, really, for more advanced stuff. Okay. Shall we press on to, uh, I say, this is the all about uh, the key stage one and possibly um, a bit of a key stage two. Uh, on Scratch, I'm not sure you're if you're familiar with these things, um, but this is should where try, block coding. Should we, try, should we try our hands up again? Let's just see. Yeah, go for it. Who's, who's familiar with um, Scratch? Any, any hands coming up there, Megan? None so far. Oh, okay. Okie dokie, not to worry. Uh, well, better, no? So it's, it's, a bit, uh, it's a bit more innovative. So um, about, I think it's 12 or 13 years ago, Scratch came out from MIT, it's, uh, the Media Lab. And it's the idea that you can uh, create a piece of code without writing it. And uh, just by moving blocks. So let's say that I want to make the cat move uh, when the arrow to the right is moved. I go to motion and I move it 10 steps. Let me zoom in a little bit. And if I wanna make a copy of this and I make it to the left and I make change this to minus 10, now I've got my computer keyboard that uh, simply controls the cat going forward and backwards. Very quickly, uh, you can add the music interactions. And at the same time, if I just make a copy of this and I attach two notes, for example, uh, well, let's, let's stick to drums. Maybe I change this to kick drum. And then we've got. Okay. Um, again, if you're looking for complicated rhythm, precise timing and everything, you are in the wrong spot. Um, also in the wrong age group. Um, but uh, for a, a very simple human computer interaction, this is beautiful. We mentioned earlier the makey makey, and that will send some keystrokes, including the right arrows and the left arrows. Now imagine having a 
a background that is uh, connected to whatever topic you are teaching. I'm not sure. Let's say that for some reason we're doing Greek literacy. And then instead of having this horrible cat, you've got, uh, you can upload a picture of yourself, of your classroom, of your student, of a pet, of, or, or a proper Greek tragedy mask or something like that. And you can make it move, animate. So for example, um, actually, let me show you a bit more advanced code that we produce with the kids using the same uh, principles. This is that. This is what we created uh, yesterday morning. Okie dokie. So uh, it might be a bit loud. Huh? Apologies in advance. Uh, each of these characters has got a little bit of uh, music connected to it and a little bit of an animation. So the cat is moving. And then here's the speaker. So just so you have an idea and you're not scared and say, oh my goodness, this is super complicated. Uh, the cat called Terrible Cat uh, changes, plays these notes and uh, this uh, quite standard MIDI uh, numbering. So 60 is your middle C and you just follow up. Uh, 61 is a C sharp, 62 is a, a D and so forth. A am I right in assuming that everybody is uh, music speaking or do we need to explain, uh, Nigel, what do you reckon? I just, I just keep for granted these things or? Uh, we, we try, I think everyone's music speaking. Okay, okay, perfect, perfect. If not, so, raise your hand. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, please feel free to ask questions. Or so ask, this, ask a chat, you use the chat and say, could you explain mm -hmm. a bit more? Okie dokie. So for example, 63 is your E flat. So you can see it straight here. And then you just count your semitones up, F sharp or G flat, depending if you're thinking in E flat minor, A flat and uh, C sharp again, Please keep in mind that these apps are built by engineers and their understanding of music is usually very limited. Mm -hmm. So I can prove it to you. 63 is E flat. So if I'm in E flat minor, I want this to be a G flat. There's no excuse. But when I hit 66, it's called F sharp. So the logic is faulty. Um, and I think, let's see. Ah, yeah, B flat is correct. Fair enough. Uh, so you, you basically sequence them through and the job is done. These beats... Now, they are quite interesting. If we call one the crotchet or the quarter note, 0 0.25, it's, it's a quarter of that length. So it's a semiquaver, right? So you can go lo lower to demi-semi by using a 0 0.125. If you use other nomenclatures, I'm, I'm talking about 16 and uh, 30 seconds. And um, 0 0.5 will be a quaver or, a, or an eighth. Um, the interesting part here is that you can create very, very long Nankaro like um, rhythms. So I can put this as a 0 0.7 against, oh, sorry, 0 0.7, and this is a 0 0.3. Now, people like Roger Redgate might include this in their scores, but if you're out of the new complexity, I'm sure you don't use this type of rhythms, which is a little bit less than a dotted quaver. Uh, and uh, this, I, it's, it's kind of a short triplet sort of thing. But the rhythm is completely out, but it kind of still works. Let's see. You see, it's a completely different feel because we are splitting the, the rhythm in, in, uh, in decimals instead of a proper musical notation. Um, changes the costume, so that's how we do the animation. The speaker instead, don't get scared, don't get scared, don't worry. This is just uh, three notes happening at the same time. So once you get familiar with the numbers, 49 is uh, uh, D flat, G flat, and B flat, so this is just uh, D flat major. Actually, uh, sorry, sorry, my mistake. Uh, G flat major on first inversion, second inversion. Um, and then uh, this keep going. So basically you've got a repetition of four chords that go through. And at the same time, they change the costume and the backdrop. So the speaker, you've noticed changes colors. And also um, at the end of the loop, it will change the background. The tree in this case is the drummer with a kick, hat, snare, hat, which is your boots and cats and boots and cats. And finally, Just, the hippo. Yes? It'd be really interesting to see. I mean, this is, is this a, a drag and drop, I presume. Just, just show us how you'd pull a bit of code oh, in. Oh, drag and drop. Yeah, 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 no problem. So let me just delete this stuff. So um, once you log into Scratch, you add your music blocks here. 
and you've got quite a lot of stuff available. And uh, let's say, so this is the tree and I want to create some uh, uh, drum stuff, just a very simple drum loop. Um, let's say, let's make a different rhythm. So this would be crotchet on the kick, crotchet on the snare, quavers on the kick. So it's a 0.5. You just need to become a little bit familiar with the numbers. Uh, but to be honest, the way I learned is I just wrote down quaver equals 0 0.5, kept it by the desk for a while. Okay. And then, uh, ta -ta 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 -ta, just a sec, uh, pa, and then open hats. There you go. Now you've got, uh, when you go and click on the tree. There we go. You got a very simple loop. And uh, if you want to go on to control, you get a repeat block. And now, again, you see that this is not a musical software. So that number 10 doesn't quite make any sense, nor does in Downing Street. But oh, oh, what was happening for that? Nobody said that. Um, it repeats the loop four times. Okay, so now you've got something that goes forward. If you wanted to create something uh, like, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, quiet down, quiet down. If you wanted to create something along the lines of a patatap, what you would do is perhaps, uh, I'll show you how easy it is, create a new project, drag in uh, a key. So for example, I'm just, uh, since we are working on uh, the Jazz North project, we're gonna do uh, just three letters as en are enough because J, A, and Z. Okay, a second. There we go. Now, if I grab this backdrop, modify it, I'm just going to grab three colors completely at random. Okay, there's no, not really any logic behind this. Okay, so I've got the purple. I'm going to make a copy of this and make a copy of this. Um, choose another color. Let's go green here. And then finally, there we go, yellow. Okay, so let's say, uh, obviously it's always proper to uh, index them. So I'm just gonna use the names, purple, green, yellow. Oh, sorry, yellow. Fabulous. And then uh, in the code, you need to go back into the cat. So when J key is pressed, you go to looks and uh, switch backdrop to, let's say that this is yellow, I'm happy. Okay, fine. When I press A, I wanna go to green. And when I press uh, Z, oh, sorry. When I press Z, I wanna go to uh, per, what's the missing, uh, purple? purple. Yeah. yeah, there we go. So if I now write jazz, J, A, Z, Z, and of course the Z is the same color, J, A, Z, Z. So you can see how easy it is to make a very basic interaction. Then you can use the effects, the colors that change, the sprites that change size and so forth. And once again, that discussion on the Makey Makey or any other physical computing device will be able to uh, be connected to this environment. Uh, to attach the music is the same thing. You just go attach your music blocks and um, only thing I'm suggesting is if you are interested in doing this thing, don't make them in a sequence because the computer will wait for you to press J, switch to yellow, and then play the music. What you want instead is make a parallel process in which you can create the note. And uh, by the way, you can set a, a different instrument. And now I'm going to grab a different note. So let's say that this is a, um, what it is, an organ. This one instead, I'm gonna change to uh, bass. And finally, uh, this one goes to, again, one random uh, trombone. And I want them to play some notes as well. So, ah, uh, sorry. Be just a few seconds left, sorry. There we go. And then on Z, sorry, it's a bit untidy, but the proof, uh, so the idea for this is that we are not only playing different notes, but we're also playing different instruments. Okay, so now J, A, Z. Wow, 
Well, that's just sense. A, amazing. The thing that really strikes me from this, I think it looks fantastic, but if you've never done any, well, the two things that strike me is one, the kind of places where you might use that in a, in a lesson mm -hmm. in music. And the second thing is, how would you start? Is, is there a, like a other tutorial so you could start this oh, is basically yes. coding? Yes, 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 yes. Plenty, plenty, plenty. So the beautiful thing about Scratch is that because it's an open source language, uh, the deal is you can use it for free, but everything that you make becomes available to everybody else. So for example, if I, if I type maybe piano, lots of people will have created a piano. So I can go inside, maybe choose one. Let's see what this one does. Uh, I'm just going to grab the first one just for the sake of it. I have no idea how this works. I'm just using the mouse. I'm using the keyboard, nothing works, but I'm guessing that this means different instrument. Okay, now, okay, I'm happy. Natalie did a good job. I wanna see how she did it, right? See inside. And here's my code available. So this, sorry, here's her, her code. So I've got all of the notes that she put. You can see that they are just the simple rectangles. Mm. And this is each note has a job and uh, plays something. So this is uh, A sharp two. So it basically it's a B flat in two separate mm. octaves. And that's, well, that's great. So you can just basically find an, an example and yeah. uh, take it apart or yes. copy it. So, so if you wanted to copy it and use it yourself, how would you, because you obviously can't mess with Natalie's piano. Uh, you can just uh, save save to your computer and uh, it will be available. If you want to actually interact on the cloud with it, you go to Remix. And Remix is this uh, uh, function here, which is somebody creates an engine and then uh, you go and build stuff with it. Okay. Does that make sense? So it's pretty much, um, let's say that somebody sets up an environment for you and then you can pick and mix the elements within this environment to create it your own way. So Megan, what, what do you think? Is this, is this something that you might be able to use in your teaching? De definitely, definitely. And I think some of the school, well, primary school at that age, um, they are doing bits of coding already. So linking the two together could be really helpful. Uh, and yes. I like that it's, it's both, it helps kinesthetic learners, auditory learners and visual learners because of the way it looks um, and in, in the way it works. I think that's awesome. I'll definitely be using it. <laughs> any, any quick hands up from our, um, our, our people today? I can't think, what, what should I call everybody? Our attendees from our group. Um, a quick show of hands if you think this is something that you might be able to use in, your, in, in, in the classroom or in your music making, teaching. Only one. <laughs> Only one. Okay. <laughs> Great. Probably, that's fine. Probably, that's time, fine. probably time to move on then. Uh, Enrico. <laughs> that's all right. That's right. So, I mean, just in case you're curious uh, on, uh, on the sort of adoption in schools, um, international schools, private schools use Scratch since year three, sometimes year two, and kids are pretty much proficient uh, by the end of uh, primary school. They can pretty much do everything. Uh, an alternative is uh, Purple Mash. I don't recommend it because I think it's also paid for and it's not an international thing. Um, Scratch, you can teach it online and it's got lots of different languages available as well. Um, of course, state schools, the different uh, uh, bunch all together. So it's really down to the teacher that you've got, if you're lucky or not. Um, in brief, we could, we have in the past taught the exact same project to undergraduates and uh, year fives with the exact same pace and exact same uh, success. The thing about these uh, subjects is because they are so new, we cannot give for granted any new, uh, sorry, any pre-existing knowledge. Imagine going to school and teach a maths lesson on linear equations, which is quite basic, uh, to people that do not know numbers. Um, you cannot, so you need to start from the numbers, right? And this is what we have to do with all of the codes. So it's a mixed bag. So if you're planning these type of workshops, I think the modular approach is the best one where you just have a, what you want to teach, but also, oh my goodness, they have no idea what I'm talking about. Let's start from scratch approach, uh, which is usually the case. However, uh, the instrument that you saw, 
uh, the one with the, the cat, the tree and everything is a result of two hours workshop in two separate days with years three and four. So I, I'm teaching this week, I'm uh, virtually teaching in Wiltshire and uh, we had 30 kids and pretty much everybody got to the end quite, uh, quite easily. And of course, those more proficient can create 12, 12 30, 40 notes, different loops, harmonies and stuff. Uh, the others uh, will have a, a basic interaction, but uh, it's really prone to learning differentiation. So it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Hey, Enrico, this is a really good yeah. time just to say that it's, it's, it's now two o'clock. So yeah. it's one minute gone. There's 30 minutes left. Um, yes, we've covered. Is that three of the the apps we've covered? And uh, five. Five. Okay. Yes. Well, before we do the last thirty minutes, just to say that uh, Enrico is available this afternoon if you'd like to book a twenty-minute consultation to talk about any of these things. Um, so, please let me know. Probably the best thing to do is just um, you use the chat and put a, a message there. Then I'll contact you back by your email, which I'll I'll have as well. Um, and also, when we get into this, there'll also be, I've got an evaluation form to fill in. Um, where would we be without evaluation forms? It's a digital one. <laughs> so I'll, I'll share that yeah, as perfect. we get towards the end. I hope everyone's okay and finding this useful. And uh, let's carry on, Enrico. Back to you. Okay. Okay, perfect. So let's... Uh... These are two different things that I wanted to show you. So if you are a secondary school teacher or involved with secondary schools, I am pretty sure that you have not seen the microbit. However, four years ago, I think four or five million microbits have been delivered to all the secondary schools, at least all the state schools for all the year sevens. Uh, since then, they've mostly lived in a sealed mint condition box as a Star Wars figurine in the hope they will uh, uh, reach a, uh, accrue value over the years. Um, but uh, normally what we try to do is uh, try to look at the bottoms of the storage rooms and find these boxes and then teach the kids. This is a fabulous um, sensor packed card that can be used for music, uh, for gaming devices, lots of beautiful things. And it's very easy, really connected to Scratch. You will see in a minute how identical it is. Wearable devices, here it is, the Circuit Playground where you can create fashion uh, items. We created an entire fashion shows with uh, grade five students, which is pretty much year six here uh, at an international Canadian school in Hong Kong. Minecraft, you create a mod, uh, for these famous video games, Lego Mindstorm, same language for those that move. The, these are the motorized Legos, a robot called Q. And uh, this is the one that I'm teaching the most at the moment because we're preparing a video game summer school. So if you're interested in it, in the last week of July, we're going to be working on that. So it's pretty cool. Um, let me show you the interaction real quick. We give it a name and the name is called Name because I'm tired of being creative. So uh, we've got an emulator here. Everything works on the browser. A menu, you see is the same as Scratch, and then your code lives here. So let's say that I wanna create a, I'm gonna go quite quick here, sorry. I wanna create a character that moves and uh, plays some song. So I am now a pizza slice that goes around the screen. All right? Now I wanna create a sort of a, an enemy Okay, so I'm going to grab another one. And uh, this time, I'm just going to create a simple, there we go, just a simple bar. Remember the, the boom wax that we did before? Here it is. And it's uh, right in the middle of my screen, so it's annoying me. I'm going to move it. And if you notice the names of the, um, uh, sorry, of the variables and of the code, they're very self-explanatory. Set C to what? to a sprite that looks like this thing. And what type of it, uh, what type of thing is it? It's an enemy. Where do I position it? Well, I'm gonna position it to, to the right. And now the computer is asking, well, what are you gonna do about this? Well, I'm gonna say that if my pizza, which is called, actually, let me call it pizza so it makes more sense. So if pizza touches note C, So if pizza touches C, oh, sorry. What do you want to do? I want to play a piece of music. Okay, let's go. Now I'm going to go and see when the pizza touches the red bar, you get the sound. 
Now imagine putting 10, 15, 20, and now you can go around and play your xylophone with these things. We've created some other video games and uh, we're teaching this in an entire summer school. Um, obviously some are a little bit more advanced. This is the Space Olin, which I hope it's okay. Shoots. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Fair enough, I died. <laughs> So the theme is a violin or a viola, because it's quite a fat one, that throws bows at the alto clefs because it's tired of sight reading. And it's, uh, I'm sure you've noticed the fabulous bass line of the packable score, the packable cannon. And every time you kill an alto clef, uh, down with alto clefs, down with alto clefs, you uh, get uh, through this array. These numbers, they might be a little bit alien, uh, but uh, they're just notes. So this is D, middle D, A, B, F sharp, G, D, G, A. So this is your usual da, 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 da. And it just cycles through, that's it. Uh, it seems quite complicated, but uh, again, these are tutorials step by step. If you wanna learn these things, they're really cool. I'll show you how they look like. Let's say that you have a, you wanna chase the pizza with this. Uh, they tell you everything. They say, open the scene to box drawer Draw the set background color. And then uh, I have no idea what this means because I don't speak English. So I check here and says, oh, set background color, perfect. Gonna go and grab it, scene, background color, click on it, choose, and here's my background color coming up. And then you follow through the steps. Of course, you need to pick it up little by little. If you don't practice your scales, you're not playing piano. So that's it, it's the same thing. You need to practice your code if you wanna do this. Well, if you are advanced and you wanna do more with the stuff, well, you can always go and uh, dig into the JavaScript which lives behind the code. And this is actually what you've been creating. Um, but what the kids see is this part. So it's much easier. You can imagine going into a class of people that can barely spell out their names and uh, try to even explain the difference between a, a normal bracket, square bracket, or uh, like a, a greater than, or this is called, what is this thing called? A curly bracket or something? I do Python, so I don't do many of these. Um, so you can see how difficult stuff can become much, much easier. And uh, this is the result of a workshop of two hours with year fives and six, so it's not too scary. How can I come on a workshop like that? I, I think that looks brilliant. Uh, <laughs> Fabulous. And we I mean, the, these, this particular type of thing, so we're basically getting inspirations from the, the various video game styles, but we're transforming them into musical versions. So I'm sure you've noticed that this would be a space, a kind of a space invader sort of thing where you've got the spaceships coming towards mm -hmm. you, you're shooting a ray and that's it. We changed this into music stuff and... Uh, we just added a melody uh, so that it's a bit more recognizable. We are doing a video game summer school in, uh, it's for kids, but uh, to be honest, uh, I can't see why there should be an age limit. So you might find a few things a bit easier, but um, I think if you want to join us, it will be advertised on our website in a couple of weeks. And it's a, it's a full week, five uh, sessions. You can just join a few if you like. Um, we haven't decided the price, but as a policy, it's always going to be under 50 pounds for the entire week. So it's, it's going to be quite straightforward, I think. That sounds really good. Now, look, I noticed we've got 20 minutes left. Yes. And uh, we haven't, or you haven't talked about Soundtrap. Soundtrap. Which... Let's do it real quick. Let's go. And, and to give Soundtrap a bit of context. So this is more, it, it looks like a cut down version of... Um, you know, something that a professional musician might use. Yes. As, but it's like a, a, a much easier pitch, a bit lower, but it's still quite sophisticated. Let's say that, yeah, it's got all the basic ingredients that you want. Uh, so for example, uh, drums. So here's my first bar. Maybe I can, uh, uh, let's say, let's just get uh, just two bars just for the sake of it. This is a kick, snare, kick, snare, right? it's nothing special. So you got a two bars loop, yeah? Yeah. Uh, you, can, uh, you can choose your sounds, of course. You can go and grab your basses. 
Uh, I'm going to go two different things. So I'm going to just play a minor pentatonic using my keyboard. You see that these letters are obviously not musical notes. That's because it's a piano keyboard uh, overlaid on top of a computer keyboard. Just grab a bass, sorry. Uh, bass. Okay, we normally teach in minor pentatonic to all the kids because we don't have to worry too much about uh, musical knowledge. Everything works well together. So you can go ahead and record. It will count you in. Maybe let me slow it down a tad. There we go. And let me show you. Bass line coming up. Okay, that's very simple. Play back, you've got drums and bass. Okay, let's get a little synth real quick. And this time I can play with a keyboard. I, I've just plugged in a keyboard and it's the same, it's up and running. Actually, no, sorry, I'm lying. It's coming from another instrument, sorry. I need to go into settings, MIDI, and grab my MIDI keyboard and now it's here. But it's a terrible sound. See, same thing. That's it, you got your chords. You wanna check your chords, you can go into the piano roll and you've got everything available here. Of course, as you can see, you need a bit more musical knowledge here. Uh, but uh, even if you're just playing around, you can uh, use the loops which are built in. And uh, for example, I don't know, in terms of beats, you can get started with, the, I don't know what this sounds like. Okay, fair enough. You can grab it, drop it in, and then uh, it's ready to go. You connect your, sorry, you adjust your loop to whatever length you need it. This is gonna be, there we go and you can start dragging and dropping stuff inside. So let's get some bass. And then maybe a synth. <laughs> this is quite cool, it's quite contrasting. So it's all in the same key? Uh, not necessarily. You need to be a little bit careful, but it looks like it. So this is a, yeah, let's have a look. Uh, it sounds like it's in E. Yes, it's in E. Mm. And this bass, you can actually check. So you've got E, D, sorry, D, E, D, E. Yeah, yeah, so it's an E7. So this is quite different. So that's using pre preset loops. Yeah. But say if you want to do your own, I might have composed my own keyboard and the lead part, but I wanted to use their beat. So rather than my yes. beat, you could use your own beat. Absolutely. You can combine as many things as you like. So for example, if I go back into the uh, synth here, now that I know that it's in E7, actually, sorry, it's, uh, come on. So this is me on the keyboard. I can just play around the bass that we just made. That's it. So you can uh, make some stuff, play some stuff. And of course you can uh, record at the top because it uh, gets, gets access to your uh, webcam mic or your built-in mic just by using uh, these microphones and then uh, that's it you're off so this you is can, so this yeah. is more sophisticated what sort of age range would you we start on year six we start on year six and then we carry on uh, if you want to go lower you can um, it's it's highly dependent on the musical knowledge so if there is zero musical knowledge then you can uh, uh, use the pre-built loops uh, or you can be a bit more prescriptive usually we teach this the most 
common time in which we teach this is with the year seven and eight, when we are building an instrument, a physical instrument with the Makey Makey, that sends some notes into this. Um, and, um, and that's it, pretty much. It's, uh, it's up and running uh, with, the, with an external instrument. It can be connected real quick, exactly as you connect this MIDI keyboard. You can export the audio and use it in any other project. For example, you can get a little loop and then chuck it inside your scratch patch. That's absolutely fine. You can just go to File, Export, and that's it. Uh, you can do quite advanced. I mean, I think all the way to BTEC, uh, GCSEs, BTEC stuff is absolutely fine. It's just as good, if not better, than a garage band. And uh, the, w the reason why I prefer it to any other software for teaching is that uh, there is no compatibility issues because it's uh, cloud-based. There's no, sir, I forgot my pen drive at home. Excuse, it's always there. And uh, as long as they remember the password, they, you can access their work from home. You can set it up as a Google Classroom if you like. So you've got all the kids' accounts. And uh, oh, by the way, sorry, I forgot to mention in, the, my, in Make Code, if you're studying that, there is uh, today, no, sorry, tomorrow, Microbit Foundation is releasing a new Microbit Classroom, which is available for remote teaching. Uh, for all corners of the world in which you can see the code from everybody in real time. Just a little note in case you're interested. Okay, we should add that into the, the comments, into, into the chat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, wow, that, that's a really great tool. In fact, even as a musician, you could use just for, just for you know, quick note taking on the move if you didn't have any of your apps Absolutely. with you. Yes, yes. You can use it uh, with, uh, on an iPad, on a phone, on a computer. Obviously, as always, the, the web version is more advanced than the app version. Uh, but, uh, I mean, the key limitations on the app is that you do not have the step sequencer like this. So you, you do not have this visualization, uh, yeah. this one. You can only see it like this. You can still interact. But it's a problem. And also, you don't have the piano roll. So this uh, moment, sorry. This stuff here is not appearing on the app, or at least not on the free version. I've never paid for it, so maybe there's some extra stuff, but I, I doubt it. Well, Enrico, this has been just, just simply amazing. Thank you so much for coming along and giving us this presentation. The thing that really strikes me is that, man, you're the wizard. You're the, <laughs> the, the way, the speed at which you were laying down those tracks and you okay. all the various different <laughs> things you're, you're working with. But I find it really exciting that we're, we're looking at music and how it links in, you know, with, 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 with visual things and, and like with the computer coding. I think this yes. is really exciting how it all comes together. So let's throw it, throw it over to some um, questions from our group today. So if you have a question, um, hey, Megan, what do you reckon? Should we, should we try? We could try turning microphones on. Yeah. Um, or take chat. Yeah. Um, the only thing is we could end up enabling microphones and then we get lots of noise okay. and maybe not people they might not have any questions um, well, if someone had a question they could raise their hand and then you turn them on yeah mm -hmm. yeah i do have a quick question with regards to soundtrap yeah um how do i get my students onto it how do i sort that out and how do i teach them do you know um getting them onto the same project that I would be working on, how would I link that up? Okie dokie, moment. I suppose that this means when you're not in the same room, right? Yes, that's okay. what I mean, yeah. So, so I'll just so, interrupt for one second just to say, while uh, Enrico is, is helping Megan with this, if you've got a question, use the chat and pop it into the chat and then we can have the next one fired up so we can use the last 12 minutes to get any more questions. Thank you. Okie dokie, and thanks for the lovely comments in the chat as well. Thank you guys. Um, okay, so uh, for the first 30 days, you got a free um, sharing, which you use this thing here, the silhouette, and then you invite the collaborators via email. You can do the call or you can do the email. We usually do not teach about this because of uh, safeguarding reasons. But if this is your class, if this is your student, of course, you can go ahead and do it, absolutely. Um, after 30 days, you're gonna have to get a subscription. So there is a school-wide subscription uh, where I guess, uh, I don't know, I mean, they may, might buy like 100, 200 accounts and then you're up and running. Otherwise, if you wanna do things on the cheap, just create a new account every month, that's it. 
Um, <laughs> right. it, it works more or less like a Google Doc. So when we are in uh, uh, in a classroom with maybe 30 or when, you know, in certain big schools in Hong Kong, I teach classes of 60 uh, in different rooms. So everything is connected. Uh, it's, um, what's it called? it's an Apple school. So we've got everything. Uh, what's it called? The, the, the AirPlay. Is that the one? Uh, where you, you know, when you send to multiple screens and stuff in different classrooms. Anyways, you don't have to do it, but uh, it's quite nice uh, when uh, they can work in different groups. So let's say that you've got three year fives or year seven or year nine and classes and you want um, five people to work on the drums, five people to work on the bass and so forth. You can connect them and uh, make inter-class collaborations, which is quite cool. And to be honest, you make your stuff, hit save, and as soon as you hit save, it gets to the other person. Um, that's it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So we haven't had any other questions. I'm just putting a link here to our feedback form. Um, it'd be really helpful to us to have your feedback, how you've got on today. It's, it's really simple. It'll take you like a minute at the most. It's just how you found it to get onto the... Uh, to join the webinar, uh, other comments, and any kind of topics you think you'd like to know more about that we could maybe look at doing a web webinar on in the future. Mm -hmm. um, do we know, is there anything that you've used at a higher level than high school? Are there any applications that you've used that are sort of maybe more sixth form college level? Um, we, uh, no, the, the, the remit of the music education hub does not cover six forms. So we've never taught there. Um, okay. my short answer would be that, um, don't bother is the same thing. Uh, a 10 year old, a 15 year old and a 55 year old have got the exact same knowledge of technology. So mm -hmm. you can, you can pretty much assume that they know nothing and you start from scratch. Um, 9.9 9 .9 times out of 10, it works like that. Of course, if it's your classroom and you know the kids and you've been teaching them, then you might want to go a little bit further. But for example, the micro bit that we discussed at the beginning, um, they, uh, they work on the block coding. If you want to take them to the next series, uh, so like higher, you need to learn Python, which is a, a coding language. Uh, for the composition, it's, it's just stick to this one and then choose a platform and stick to it. Uh, yeah. It's Logic, it's uh, Ableton, it's uh, Pro Tools, I think it still exists. Um, and other things, I mean, GarageBand is, is you know, it's a toy. It's, it's not really interesting, but it's, it's a choice. I think the best thing is take a platform and stick to it. Because uh, yeah. even Soundtrap is, is pretty good. It's pretty advanced. I mean, uh, it does pretty much everything we need to do in a classroom environment, of course. Yeah, awesome. In terms of coding instead, um, there is a gap in the market at the moment where when you jump out of the block-based coding, which are the colorful blocks that we discussed today, there is a quite big gap between that and, uh, for example, the JavaScript backend that you saw and yeah. uh, the writing code from scratch. So. I think one good transition is create the code in blocks and then after a few months, create the first block, switch to JavaScript and then try to basically copy what you've done to expand it. Because at the end of the day, it's text. So if uh, creating one note requires that syntax, then if you do copy paste, you can create another one makes sense uh, being able to access the back end means that you can create lots of very beautiful uh, variations because those blocks are set in stone by somebody else and uh, th th there's a very very beautiful quote that i had from a, a friend who creates modular synthesizers um, and uh, he, he always said that uh, for him, creating a, uh, so modular synthesizers are those with a gajillion cables. Uh, uh, if you are uh, new generation, just check uh, London Modular. If you're old generation, I'm sure you've seen Emerson, Lake and Palmer with all those crazy things. Um, or, uh, you know, anything with big cables or the moogs and stuff. And what he says is like creating an instrument is an act of composition because I have the endless possibilities ahead of me and then I'm just narrowing them down because my instrument is going to do that. 
And uh, Luthier probably does exactly the same thing, isn't it? Uh, we've got all of these extensions of every string, uh, um, air windpipe and so forth, but then we choose a specific thing, a specific position and so forth. And then we can create our compositions. So with block coding, it's exactly the same. Whilst coding pretty much gives you availability to everything because a coding language works like a human language. So you've got your grammar, your syntax, your spellings, but the beautiful thing is that you can uh, uh, expand on it and you don't need other people to agree with you. You can create your own libraries. Um, in a modern language, of course, it's kind of similar. If any, any, enough people take on that word, then it becomes part of the language and it goes into the OED or whatever system, whichever language has. Um, but uh, I think in code is the same. So when you, when you look at the block coding, it's a bit, it's a bit narrow. I mean, uh, you cannot do everything, everything but uh, it's enough to get an introduction and then you can boost yourself. You can hatch out of it, basically. Okay. Awesome. That, that's, so we did have a question. Um, I think Eva was saying, you mentioned about the microbit classroom tomorrow. So can anyone go along to that? And I put a link, is it um, like arcade.makecode.com? Was that the... Yes, the sorry, is, is the question about my workshop or about the Google Classroom feature? You said tomorrow there was a micro bit classroom tomorrow that anyone could. Oh, I see. No, no. Okay. So no, the, the, the micro bit is Workshop. launching a classroom environment. That's a software ah. that you can use. Okay. So it's kind of a zoom thing for teaching micro bit. So if you want to organize a teaching micro bit stuff, you can do it. Not a problem. Um, if you want uh, a workshop, we are running a workshop on arcade tomorrow and one on Soundtrap as well. So we started this morning, so you will jump in halfway through. But if you want, I can share the links here. Uh, yeah. Can I put attachments in this chat or not? Uh, um, uh, maybe not. I don't uh, think you can, no. Uh, let me just grab the link just a second, sorry. So again, these are workshops dedicated to years five and six, uh, but uh, I can't see why you shouldn't be joining it. So this is the 9.30 session on Arcade. And then this is going to be the 11 o'clock. So these, um, these times are in BST, guys. So if you are in uh, Central European time, you need to do plus one, okay? Has that gone just to the panelists or has that gone to... Um... Uh, I put to all panelists, so I think everybody should have received it. I'm not sure so... if Eva's will have got that. I think it has to go to the uh, attendees as well. There we oh, go. panelists, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. That was silly of me. Um, yeah, I've pasted it. There, you don't? There. Oh, thank you so much. So the 9.30 is on Arcade and the 11 o'clock instead is on Soundtrap. Once again, you're basically jumping in halfway through because we started this morning, uh, but we will provide you with a starting code at the beginning and uh, so you can kind of catch up. And if you're interested, interested in the Soundtrap, uh, you pretty much do your own composition. We're just guiding you with the main ingredients. So it's not a problem. Only thing I'm going to say is if you're interested in Soundtrap, please make an, an account before we get started because uh, we made it this morning with the kids. So as soon as we hit the Zoom, we're going to crack on and there's no time. So please do it in advance. On Arcade, there's no need to make the, um, the codes, sorry, the accounts. And by the way, is makecode.com. And sorry, I have to send to panelists and attendees. There we go. Okay, we've got two minutes left. So how about this, Enrico? What would be your three top tips for someone who's going to be using music apps like this online in, in a teaching situation? In a teaching, okay, fabulous. So step one, an online session is not an offline session brought online, full stop. It's not going to work the same. It doesn't have the same dynamic. I'm speaking to you and I don't see you. So you can think that I'm a genius or an idiot and I have no clue unless the feedback comes back. So when you get to the online stuff, please, please consider it as a new medium. So experiment with it. There is no right, no wrong. There is very little precedent and uh, just have fun. So that's okay. the first thing. Second, Second tip, I would say... Um, don't stress out too much about attainment. Um, progression is going to be difficult to monitor. 
Um, children have got much bigger issues than their marks in school. Uh, I think there's going to be much, many, many more mental health issues these days, and obviously violence on children issues, and of course, uh, social issues as well. Because uh, remember, if you want to pick up a phone and call a friend, you can do it. They can't, uh, unless you do it through them, but they still cannot see each other properly. So that's, uh, that's another problem. Uh, I think we just need to be, as teachers, we need to be humans with the kids more than uh, 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 teachers like, uh, like we would be in a classroom. And um, a third, if you can, uh, use the, if you have the possibility, do use it as a social moment as well. I think the times before a Zoom and after the Zoom to play around, have a chat, uh, did you eat the cake yesterday, how's your pet and stuff like that, I think it's going to be super, 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 super good for the kids. Uh, if your school allows you to keep the cameras on, please do so. Uh, we can't for because we're working in multiple schools at the same time, but it's a major, major difference. When we do a course with the kids and the cameras on, they raise their hands, they speak, they interact. You're going to cover less because obviously you're going to cover less material, but uh, it doesn't matter. You know, it's, I think it's the, the teaching that has to go, not just the, the curriculum that needs to be done. I think these would be my three things from again, based on two months of teaching online, we teach every day, two workshops every day. So we've just created some new patterns, basically. Well, Enrico, thank you so much. And thank you, Megan, too, for joining us and keeping an eye on things uh, at, at the back end here. And thank you to everyone who's taken part in this webinar today. And we'll see some of you a little bit later on this afternoon. And uh, we'll keep more, we've got more things planned coming up and we'll, we'll, we'll let you know. There was the evaluation form, I think I put somewhere in the, the chat. We'd really appreciate it if you could just take a couple of minutes just to, to complete that. So with that, we'd say um, thank you very much to everybody. And um, you know, all the best at this difficult time. And let's all be making lots of music. Absolutely. So thanks a lot. Bye. Fabulous. Bye. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.